This lesson is for fifth grade. This is chapter 11, lesson one, motion. This is the first lesson in our unit of using forces. In this lesson, we're going to hear the following vocabulary. Position, motion, frame of reference, speed, velocity, acceleration, and momentum. Let's get to it. What is motion? Well, before we answer that question, we need to know about how to answer this question. The question is, where are you? What state are you in? What city are you in? Where are you sitting right now? These questions help you to know your position. A position is the location of an object. It answers the question, where is the object? So if we know where the object is and we know its location or position, we can answer the question, what is motion? Motion is the change in position over time. So, example with the car here, you can tell the car is in motion because at one time it was right here but you can tell because of even the blur that it's in motion and it was here and now it is here. Its position is changing over time. Motion has two parts, distance and direction. Distance is the length of how far you are going. You could measure it on a grid. Uh, you can use a ruler. You can use different um, units. You can use units such as meters, kilometers, feet, uh, miles to describe the distance. Direction is which way you are going. North, south, east, west. Use tools like a compass or a protractor. Units of degrees. That helps you knowing the direction in which you're going. So again, motion has two um, parts, distance, and direction. So suppose your friend tells you they're going north. Well, you need to think of, okay, north of what? Where are you? Um, positions and motions only make sense if you have something called a frame of reference. A frame of reference is a group of objects from which you can measure a position or motion. So think of where you're sitting. What can you see in front of you and around you and in your peripheral vision? You can't see behind you because that's not in your frame of reference. But say someone in front of you is looking at you, they have a total different frame of reference. They can see behind you and to the sides and in their peripherals, but they can't see what you see in front of you. You have a different frame of reference. Frames of reference can move. Again, with the example in the car, it's quickly moving. You're in different positions all the time, so your frame of reference is constantly changing. And even think of this. If you look outside the window, everything's a blur. If you look inside the car, it's not a blur. Everything's just kind of normal as it would normally look to you. It's because you're moving with it. Everything's still in your frame of reference, but again, outside's a blur. Frames of reference can move. So again, motion is a change in position over time. Position is your location. Motion has two parts, distance and direction. And you need to have a frame of reference from which you can measure that position or motion. The next question is, what is speed? Speed is how fast an object's position changes over time. So in order to be the fastest, per se, in running a race, it's the person or animal who can travel the farthest in the shortest amount of time. To calculate speed, you divide the distance traveled by the amount of time it took to travel the distance. 
Units of speed include meters per second. This is meters per second. You'll also find them in kilometers um, per hour, or what we use in the United States here, miles per hour. The speed of a moving object can change. A runner in a really long race might go fast at first, slow down for a little bit in the middle, and then go fast again at the end. So speeds can change. Uh, we determine the runner's average speed by dividing the total distance by the total amount of time. Over short distances, like the 100 meter dash, the fastest human can run at about a speed of 10 meters per second, which is about 22 miles per hour. Over longer distances, like 50 kilometers, the fastest human can travel at about 5.6 meters per second or 12 and a half miles per hour. So you have your car may speed up and slow down as you're traveling down the highway. You take the average speed to figure out how fast you were going. So by the time you traveled somewhere, when you reach the location, take the total amount of distance traveled, how many miles, divide it by how long it took you to get there, and you have your average speed. So speedometers have your average speed. So speed plus direction. Let's add some direction. If you are driving in a car, or say you're even flying a plane, you want to know how fast you could go, but you need to know how far the trip's going to be. So with that data, you can calculate how long the trip would take. But you need to know which direction to go. Or you would totally miss it. If you're driving without direction, you're just wandering aimlessly. Velocity is the measurement that combines both speed and direction. So to change speed, saying you're going 10 miles in 10 minutes, you have distance and time, that's speed. But once you say I'm going 10 miles in 10 minutes going north, that changes to velocity because velocity is speed plus direction. Our next question what is acceleration? We all know acceleration is the change in velocity over time for an object. We more commonly think of it as, well, I'm speeding up. And decelerating means I'm slowing down. But in the technical term, acceleration, the change of the object's velocity over time. So suppose you're this race car, as you can see, and you're facing north. Saying the direction is important again because it's velocity. Once the light changes from red to green, because you're a drag racer, right? You're going to reach 180 meters per second, which is 403 miles per hour. The driver is going to let off the gas, and you travel at a constant speed. So on your watch, you see that it took you six seconds for that car to go from zero to 100 and 80 miles or meters per second. Okay. When the position of the object changed in motion, it had velocity. It sped up, it went its distance, and it had direction. When the velocity changes as it did, that meant it was accelerating. The units of acceleration are the units of velocity divided by units of time. And that's written out like this, meters per second per second. Meters per second per second. Just like motions and velocities, accelerations have a direction. So you have to say you're going 30 meters per second per second going north as was with this case with the car. So again, that's still kind of confusing. What does meters per second per second really mean? That means that each time one second passes, the car is going to gain 30 meters a second in each second. So after six seconds, 
the car reached a final speed of 180 meters per second. And after the driver let off the gas and put his foot up, the car is no longer accelerating because it's just coasting. It's going at a constant speed. The car also accelerates or when it slows down, that's called decelerating. More commonly, it's called decelerating. But you would have a negative speed. For instance, a stopping car might accelerate or decelerate at negative 30 meters per second per second. Okay? So to calculate acceleration, you take the change in speed over time. So we did 180 meters per second. It took us six seconds to get there. 180 divided by six seconds is 30 meters per second per second. So can changing direction affect your velocity? Well imagine you're in a canoe and you start paddling backwards. You can decelerate or slow down by paddling backwards. If you paddle backwards enough you're going to start moving backwards. If your acceleration changes the direction of your velocity, so remember the definition. Okay, A change in velocity does not just mean a change in speed, it also means a change in direction. When you accelerate, whenever you change direction, so when you travel around the curve in the bend of a river, if you're in the canoe, your direction of velocity even changes if your speed does not. Velocity and acceleration can both be represented by arrows. Um, by adding two arrows, you can find the velocity what's going to be after you accelerate. So our final question for the day, what is momentum? Most of us have probably gone bowling before and uh, we know there's 10 pins at the end of the lane and your goal is to knock down as many of those pins as you can with your bowling ball. Whoever knocks down the most could win. So how can we ensure that we knock down the most pins? We could use a heavier ball, or you could roll your ball faster, or you could aim it in different directions. But when you change your mass or velocity, you also change its momentum. Momentum is the product of mass multiplied by velocity. The formula is up here. The more momentum an object has, the easier it is for that object to move other objects. Units of momentum are usually equal to units of mass times units of velocity, most often kilogram meters per second, which is written like this. Sorry, kilogram sorry, meters per second. So when you you want to change an object's velocity, you have to overcome inertia. We remember in past lessons that inertia is that tendency to resist change or keep moving in a straight line. The more mass the object has, the more inertia it's going to have, and it's going to keep traveling in that straight line. The more inertia the object has, the harder it is to change its momentum. So a very heavy bowling ball, it's hard to get rolling because of inertia. But once it's rolling, it's going to have a lot of momentum. You can't stop it. But when it hits those pins, the ball's momentum is going to overcome inertia and the pins are going to come falling down. So we've answered a lot of questions today when discussing motion. We talked about motion being the change in position over time. Position is where is the object, what's its location. The frame of reference, which is how we measure our position in motion. We talked about speed which is the change of the position over time, distance divided by time. Velocity is the measurement of speed and direction. We talked about acceleration and deceleration, which is a change of velocity over time. And we talked about momentum, which is mass times velocity. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a message in the comment section. Students, you may message me on Edmodo.